So Marvel released its new show, Echo, and it finally released, and I figured I'd give my thoughts on it since it has the man, the myth, the legend, Kingpin. So I felt obligated to give it a chance at least. I had extremely low expectations for this since Marvel has been in the absolute gutter recently with most of their projects, although Loki Season 2 was absolutely amazing. Please go check that out if you get the chance. I know this review is coming out fast, but since the show is only 5 episodes, and the whole season takes like 4 hours to finish in its entirety, I figured, why the hell not binge the whole show and give you guys my thoughts on it, and see if it's even worth any of you to go watch it yourselves. So with that being said, I'd like to hop into some of the things I liked about the show first. For one thing, I've been desperately trying to find a Marvel product, get down to the street level type of hero again, since Winter Soldier, and finally, we have something in that vein. Echo is fully street level, although there are some like spiritual stuff that happens in it, but other than that aside, she's kicking gangsters' asses in some of the coolest ways possible, and the action scenes in the show are actually really cool, and don't let anyone fool you into thinking they're not. It's very reminiscent to the Extraction movies on Netflix if you've seen those movies and how it's choreographed. They're very technical, almost entirely filmed to be one shot, and the brutality of the fights are super swift and clean, and I know many people are going to want to know if it rivals Daredevil in any way, and I'd say, don't get your hopes up. Nothing really beats any of the hallway fight scenes from Daredevil, so it's not even close for me. Daredevil's fights were a lot more raw. You could feel the heavy punches Matt threw every time, along with how hard it was to actually take on a bunch of people at once. I'm not a fighting expert by any means, but you could tell that even though Matt is technically a great fighter in that show, he still struggled to take on multiple guys at once. It felt brutal, and that's what made the show super special in that regard. The fight scenes in Echo, like I mentioned before, are a lot more swift, having no real stiffness to the way they move in their fighting. And yes, even Daredevil fights like this in his quick cameo appearance, but do not worry, the fight scene he's in is so cool, and you should definitely watch that scene, if anything. He moves a lot better than how he did in She-Hulk, so if anyone is scared that it'll look like that, don't worry. To me, if the Daredevil Born Again show has action scenes like this, I'll be very satisfied. I'm a huge fan of the way action is being filmed lately with long one takes, and if more adaptations start using it, I'm not opposed to having that be integrated into the main way people fight in shows. Now, the fact this show is rated for a mature audience is a dream come true. I was sitting on my couch like a giddy schoolgirl whenever just massive amounts of blood was on my screen. Now again, don't go into this expecting Punisher and JL levels of violence, but it's a step in the right direction for Marvel, and I hope the Daredevil show utilizes this more. There's a scene where Kingpin just goes ham on a dude's face, and his whole suit along with the hands become bloody as hell and it was super cool to see. And speaking of Kingpin, I mean he steals the show. Are you expecting anything else? Vincent D'Onfrio as Kingpin is one of the best and most slept on castings of all time. He embodies the role of Kingpin so well and whenever he's on screen you literally don't know what's about to go down if it could be good or bad. He's similar to Homelander in that sense, where it's very thrilling whenever he shows up on screen. He's treated a lot better here than in Hawkeye. Hawkeye made him very cartoony, which I didn't really like, but this show brought him back down to his roots with the Netflix show kind of vibe, and I truly appreciated that the show did that. I'm glad the show handled his characterization good enough. The show has parts in it where it feels really rugged and it gives you that Netflix show type vibe, but it also falls out of it a little too much in most of the scenes, which kind of bothered me. It, it just reminded me of that Disney Plus type feeling, you know what I mean? Where it's just, it just feels like a Disney product. Thankfully, the show respects its mature rating and actually takes the stuff that's happening within the show seriously, not forcing jokes down my throat like every Marvel movie or show has these past few years. It was awesome, and it respected the viewer in that sense. Okay, so it's time to break down the main character of the show herself, Echo, and I'm very indifferent to her after watching watching the series. I definitely didn't think much of her in Hawkeye, as I thought it was just another shoehorn character in that we didn't need to see, and for the most part, that's exactly what it was. She had very little character development in that show, and it still shows here. The show only had 5 episodes, which is one of the biggest critiques I have for the show in its entirety, because it doesn't give any time for any of the characters to truly grow or have time to develop. Echo's backstory is rushed through in about 20 minutes within the first episode, and it left me feeling kind of empty, like I didn't really care for her relationship with Kingpin at all. Which which, as an audience, we're supposed to care about since it plays a huge role in the main storyline of the show. We're supposed to believe that Kingpin has had this very endearing relationship with Echo since her early life, but we're shown it through very quick flashbacks that legit last 10 minutes at most, through 5 episodes, just doesn't make me care at all. And since this Kingpin is confirmed to be the Netflix Kingpin, I just don't believe their relationship 
friendship has merit, considering it has never been mentioned in the Netflix show, and just feels really damn forced in my opinion. All of their personal conflicts aren't shown with enough time for us as an audience to truly buy into their relationship. And it's a shame, because I do think their relationship could have been good if it had more time to develop over a full season. And I believe that goes for every relationship she has in the show as well, not just Kingpin. It's very much Echo goes here, sees some people she knows, is forced to have a random conversation with them, and move on. We don't see the heartbreak of these people for not seeing Echo for 20 years. Literally, she's been gone for 20 years, and the most we get is a I missed you type thing, and we move on to the next action set piece. Which sucks, because I really like the down-to-earth moments shared between the main characters when we do get them. This show would have 100% been benefited from a 10 to 13 episode season, like the original Netflix shows did, or like Andor. Its pacing being so fast to keep up with the 5 episode timeline is what ruins the story for me, or at least faults it in my opinion. If we had multiple episodes, like 4 or 5 of just seeing Echo as she grew up with Kingpin, dealing with the aftermath of her tragic backstory, it would have been awesome, which is why the first season of Daredevil worked so well. We got to really see the development of Matt with Stick, how his father died, and more. Whereas here, it's brushed aside very quickly. And look, I get that this show is probably a throwaway for Marvel, because nobody even knew the show was coming out, and the fact they released the whole show straight away means they probably had no faith in it. But that's exactly Marvel's problem recently. This show could have been amazing had they actually taken this character seriously and not used it for content farming. But hey, what else is Marvel known for these days? The best character I can compare Echo to is Punisher from the Netflix series. Both characters started on another show and got their own spin-off series. But Punisher is handled so much better. An issue I have with Echo is how reliant it is in the first episode for you to have seen Hawkeye to kind of understand what's happening. You're only given a quick montage of what happened in Hawkeye in the first episode, but it doesn't really work because if I hadn't seen Hawkeye, I'd be like, what the hell did I just watch? Because it seems ridiculous. That's why Kingpin and her relationship falters because you get at most 20 minutes of them building their relationship and then her shooting him in the head. It's like getting hit with a stun grenade. Whereas Punisher was integrated into the Daredevil show very nicely. He was given the backstory of the comics, but was a natural foe for Daredevil in his fight against crime. The whole rooftop scene depicts their motives perfectly. Within the first season of The Punisher, however, we get glimpses of The Punisher's past as he's recollecting the horrors of his family dying, which is laid out really well. We get stretches of episodes building on the backstory of what happened to his family and why he acts the way he does. The show essentially built and expanded on his Daredevil introduction, which Echo doesn't really do that well from Hawkeye. Like I said, the Kingpin relationship just doesn't work because no audience member really buys the immense love Kingpin has for Echo. To us, she's just some newbie who apparently is connected to him in some way, and it would have been really nice to see a show like this develop over 10 to 13 episodes instead of 5. Like, 5 is just a ridiculous number to begin with. Like, 5? Are you what? serious? Anyways, those are my basic thoughts on the overall show for Echo. I'd say give it a shot if you want to see some low-level street fight stuff, but don't go into it expecting Daredevil levels of quality. Nothing can really beat that. Kingpin is awesome, even if his motivations are just kind of weird. If you watch this show, let me know what you all think of it. I'm interested to hear what other people have to say about a show like this. It's interesting to see Marvel go down a more mature route, and I really hope they continue to utilize this M rating in the future. I just really hope they don't screw up Daredevil Born Again. Knowing them though, I'm still wary of Matt's Daredevil being written by Marvel writers. But hey, who knows? They just axed a bunch of the old showrunners with new ones, so hopefully it changes. I'll see all of you really soon, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.